to show you how to fit a door into a cabinet opening or half an opening as in this case and um, I'm going to set this cabinet door to one side but first of all this is the, these are two of the doors that are facing me so I'm going to mark this side here with THF and this side with THS which is top hanging side that means I'm going to put my hinges on this side my hinges on this side when the doors come together in the middle of the cabinet this one will go here and the other one goes on the other side these have not been fitted they have been planed down just to get rid of the rough edges any marks from the machines or anything like that we haven't used machines on this so but that's very standard for us to surface plane the materials and after we've glued up we take off all the excesses to make sure we've got the exact overall size of the door that we want to fit so the first thing when we start to hang a door is even if we bought the door and it's come from a manufacturer we look at the style here this one has a slight curve down the length maybe a millimeter or so so I would first of all straighten up this edge and that would be regardless of this style because I'm going to put three hinges on here so if this style was bowed out this way or indeed bowed in the other way when I put my hinges on I'm going to have three hinges that will actually correct any problems that I have I like three hinges on a door it works best so first of all I'm going to true up this style of the door and I have about one millimeter in the middle here so set your plane nice and shallow make sure it's set correctly I'm going to make sure this is good and tight in if you have a vice that is not really going to support the whole of this then change your dynamic you can put something under this end you may have some way of clamping it but I'm going to try I'm going to go with this now so I've set my plane on here it's not taking any shaving I just take up the slack give it half a turn now I'm getting a shaving here and I'm taking out this rise right in the middle and I keep going I'm somewhat relying on the sole of my plane to give me a straight edge here and you can grip by the handles if you like I find I have greater sensitivity doing it the way I just did that's up to you then I sight down this edge now the edge is straight and I want to check this because this is slightly out of square can you see that now here I'm pretty close to square a little bit out of square can you see on that inside edge right inside this corner it's only a fraction out of square but I don't want it square anyway I want it out of square I want this to slope in this is my outside face I actually want an angle on here now that I've got it straight I'm going to offer this into the recess here and try it up against the style here and I have a slight gap on the front edge but when I take that inside down and I can go in the vise up here now I've got that straight what I do instead of placing the plane inside here and then tilting it over this side I take it to one side so I've got half the plane on that surface pull back can you see what's happening here I'm getting this thin shaving to one side and I keep working down this surface just like this now my shaving is now half an inch wide so I'm tapering this inside edge just taking a little bit more there so this is creating a bevel on the inside face and the bevel doesn't really matter how much that bevel is 
but I'm looking for about a sixteenth. I've got one millimeter there right now. I'm going to go more. I'm going to take a little bit heavier shaving there, I think. I wasn't getting as much off down here. to the inside face there and we still need a little bit more off this side here if you find you're getting flex like I feel like I'm getting flex at that top section as I push I'm going to drop down in the vise here and I'm going to angle my board up slightly like this. That's probably enough. I'm backing the iron off just to give that final little trim. And true up. Don't take too much off. You don't want to go past the face of here except just to straighten it. Offer this into the opening as near as you can. Now I've got, this is looking good to me. So I'm going to drop this in here. Try and keep it tight against this edge. And can you see a slight, well it's not a slight gap, it's quite a big gap along the top edge there. It's actually showing more than it is. There it is. So I just have a little bit to take off this corner here now. So drop this in the vise. And again, I don't necessarily want this square. I want to give it a slight lead in on this inside edge. So here, take it off on the inside edge by using half the plane. And then move over as you deepen. Be careful here, you do not want to go out on this edge here. Now I'm going to try it again. Can you see what I've got here on this edge here? I've got a pristine surface and I want to be out of square, which I am. I'm out of square again, so this is the outside face here. So I offer this in the recess, and this may even drop my door all the way in. Not yet, I still have some more to take off. But I am closer to that top edge, so I can take a little bit more. But I don't want to take too much because it's a bit deceptive because the door isn't fitting into the full recess yet. So. I'm going to switch around now and I'm going to put the leading edge in on this side this time on the inside so it marries up to the existing leading edge that I put into this side. This now may go, may not. Do that now. I've got a tight fit, tighter, too tight actually, but I'm going to take this out, right, damage your edges. This is still tighter than here, so I can take a little bit more off this inside edge. Closer, closer. 
this is moving, you've got to watch that. When it's freestanding, I've already checked by winding this style in to this style over here. So I've got those wound in, so I've made sure that it was not twisted. You have to make sure your cabinet not twisted because your doors are not twisted. If your cabinet's twisted, it'll show when you're fitting these. So keep it nice and firm. I feel pretty good about this. This is just a trial and error. A little bit, less error than trial, I hope. So I'm maintaining this slight uh, angle on that inside face until this fits and drops into the recess. So I don't have any gap down here, a little gap down at the bottom. And that closed it. So I have, still have a slight gap, which means sometimes that inside edge may be catching or it may have something inside that's just stopping it. This is so close. I like this nice tight fit. I don't want too much of a gap. So I'm going to check this side. Here. So I need a little bit more, two or three shavings maybe. So a good sharp plane. The first thing you want to do before you start fitting a door is sharpen your plane. Now I still have two millimeters to take off this door. I'm going to aim for about a millimeter on the top and maybe a millimeter and a half, two millimeters at the bottom of the door so that if there is any drop in the door, which there won't be, but if there was, it would miss at the bottom. There you can see. So can you see that slight gap there? So I want to close that gap up. So two more, no, three or four more shavings and, and that will be the top fitted. And then I fit the bottom. It's a strange thing, but this is the same pattern that I would use for hanging a house door. Uh, internal, external, it's the same pattern. You fit your style, then you fit the head. Can you see that now? There, so. so I have a, see that? That's exactly, that's the actual finished distance I want for the top of my door. So I'm going to take this off. I need to come from this side just a little bit, not much, that much. That's it. So now I have a crisp, clean edge. I'm going to break the edge on that. Now you can do this with a standard number four plane. You don't need a longer plane for this particularly. Just break the arras here. You don't want this to break after because you didn't take the arras off. Just Break that edge like that. So we got the style fitted now, the bottom needs to be fitted. So slide this in here, forget the top, pull this over here and take a look. Now at the bottom here, I have about two millimeters and I've got zero here. So that drops it a little bit. I need to take about a good two millimeters off this side and to do that we de generally would gauge this by eye I'm going to take a straight edge from this point here to that two millimeter point there and I'm going to use a knife but I'm only using the knife on the cross grain fibers uh, here on the style Like that. It just gives me a definitive line to work to. Can you see that there? So I got that one, two millimeters on this side here. Leading edge again, make sure you're working. So this is now my inside face. This corner is my outside. So work from this side, half the plane on. Let me empty my plane, then you can see 
where my shaving is coming from. So my shaving is coming from this side. Get it down like this. And now we're working towards this side of the, the door. So now I have the chamfer, the angle on there. I keep working this edge till I get down to my knife wall that I created. Like that. And now I want to come in from this feather edge here because this had a bigger gap. So I'm turning it round. I'm on the inside face, not touching the outside corner yet at all. Now I'm right up against the outside edge. I've got crisp, cr clean, very sharp corners at the moment. This drops on here. This will increase the gap at the top. Can you see there? And if I split that and I go up two thirds of this gap, that's the perfect gap that I need for my door to fit. So that's how we fit the door to the opening. So I've got two, two millimeters at the bottom, one millimeter at the top, and that's how I would do it. Now I would probably fit and hang this door before I fit and hang the other door. The other door is slightly bigger. I make my second door slightly larger so I can plane a little bit more off to fit the other door. So these will be, this is my next step would be to hinge the door. So I need to hinge this door next. We're going to fit hinges to this door. This door has been fitted I've got it exactly where I want it to be. There's something about hinges that people often don't realize, and that is when you, hang a, a, when you fit a hinge, the hinge goes on this style, the top of the hinge aligns with the underside of the rail. At the bottom down here, the bottom of the hinge aligns with this rail. Then if you've got a third hinge, that goes bang in the center between those two hinges. That's a very standard practice. The reason is if you do it lower in the style, down here, then you have this much, a little bit more flex in the style, whereas this is a rigid corner and it can't move away from that position. So there's no flex when it's hung that way. So first off, we're going to slide this in the vise and I'm going to, I probably can do it from your side. You could, I don't know if you can, let me bring it up a little bit there. So this point on the rail is the same as on this side. So I'm going to do this on your side so you can see, but actually I'm going to actually be working on my side of the door. So the hinge starts at this point here. There. Now you can use the knuckle of the hinge. One thing you need to know about hinges is they're not always created equal, especially as this saw with brass. So if you check this measurement here, let me see if you can see here. So there I've got 63. This is a 64 millimeter hinge. So this is 63.64. This one is 63.4. So that's great. But as you go along, make sure 63.7. So that's larger. 62. So there's quite a substantial at least a millimeter difference 63.5 so we have to know that these are different for when we hang the door so the first thing i'm going to do is set the knuckle of my hinge here on the inside for now slide up to that pencil line and i'm going to make a knife wall on the extremes of the length of the hinge just like this now that knife pass is very light. Now in this case I'm going to use the knuckle of the hinge to register and pull my knife wall down this way rather than using a gauge line. Traditionally it would be a gauge line that goes on here but this is the exact distance that I have from here to here and that works perfectly. Now 
now that I've got the knife mark there, it's really not exactly a knife wall yet, I slide my square up so that the bruising from the knife goes onto this part, this is the waste wood. So I can pull this nice and hard like this and any bruising goes on the waste wood. This one is a little bit harder. So I go into the knife wall, slide up here and that gets the knife wall on the waste side of the wood. I don't reinforce this wall here because I don't need to because that's with the grain. Bevel down, oh no, bevel up with your bevel first just to get the knife wall delineated here and then start just away from your line by about a millimeter and cut. That's consolidated the fibers but not moved the knife wall. Now I go right into the knife wall and chop and bevel down right on the edge of this long knife wall this way. I follow that exactly separating Oops, one thing I haven't done and that is I haven't set the depth that I want to cut to. I'm still shallow, I'm still not up to that. This is very important because this gauge line sets the exact depth that I want to cut to. So slide this up until the flap just fits barely inside the point of the gauge like that. So I'm exactly where I want to be. Now I may go even deeper, but probably not. This is what I forgot to do. I should have done this. I've got to run a gauge line right in between those two points of the, th the uh, extremes of the, gauge, of the uh, hinge. And now I can chop again. Now I'm not looking for depth because I'm not going down to depth. I know I'm not reaching that two or three millimeters of thickness. Yeah, so I go in here. All the way along, bevel down, chisel traveling in the way, in the direction you're going. I'm coming up to my top line here now. So I turn my chisel around. With this wood being already removed, I just creep up on my final cut line here and I take two millimeters and then one millimeter and then I'm right in the knife wall now and that knife wall will probably not have moved any uh, noticeable amount here I go into the gauge line that I marked like this just pop it with the heel of my hand if you find that too hard just use your chisel hammer. I find I have better control doing it this way. So I'm taking out the excess at the top here. I've not done anything along that back wall yet because I'm staying away from going into it. I don't want to go into it. Now you may or may not know this or if you do and you may disagree, usually this back edge of the recess is deeper than this fore edge. That's very typical for most craftsmen that worked on their hinges. That was very typical because it took the heads of the screws inside the closed hinge away from one another. Here I'm coming away from my knife wall first like this just to get some depth. gets that out of the way and now I'm going right in to my knife wall like this let's just peel out A little bit of depth. So yeah, normally we don't really use a, a lot of people are surprised, we don't usually use a hand router to get down to depth in here. You can of course, if you want to.
And that is the recess that I want for my hinge done. So I'm still a hair too tight. Oh. No, I'm not. It's bang on. I've got a slight inside corner there that I didn't quite take enough off. Just holding my hinge off slightly. That's it. So this goes in now. And that's my hinge ready for screwing into place. Once you've got the hinge fitted and you've, you're satisfied that everything is, is seated nicely, I'm just taking a small twist drill and I go right into the back corner of the hinge of the hinge hole here. So I'm in this back end, back, back corner and I drill the hole offset. There'll be enough pull on the screw when the countersink of the hinge hits that back edge of the countersink in the hinge itself. So. Now you may need to add a little, it depends on the quality of the brass screws that you're using, but you may need to add some uh, wax and this. Some furniture polish will work fine because they do snap quite frequently brass screws. So that's tight, so I'm going to turn it back till it's perpendicular, till it's running parallel to the edge. And sometimes I'll do something different. Watch this now. I drill way down in here, get the full depth of the screw because they, the threads on the screw need to bite into the walls. Then I might change the size of my bit, like this is just a hair bigger, and then just take out a little bit no more near the top. That screw felt quite hard, so I'm going half the depth there. That increases the size of the hole but only halfway so now I have still got enough bite good bite At the last half turn like that so I've got my screw heads aligned but don't hesitate to use some furniture wax. That's that. Now we're going to do the second hinge. So I'll get back to you after I've done this one. So this one, remember, lines up with the bottom or the top edge of the bottom rail. So I'll set this one and then we'll get the middle one set out. Even in this age where you have, pre, uh, you have self drilling screws, a lot of smaller screws don't have that uh, feature to them. And actually a lot of screws don't have that to them. So when you drive the screw, it can split the wood. What we do is we take a, a drill bit, just undersized the size of the shank of the screw. So it will receive the main body of the screw, but the threads on each side um, are larger than the diameter of the drill bit that you drill the hole with. So instead of using a gimlet or an awl which generally parts the fibres, this will actually drill out and remove the waste and it will allow the thread to bite the wall. So once you've sized your drill bit, you can use all kinds of drills, electric drills, uh, drill drivers. Go into the back edge here, I'm just screwing this one first. You drill out the hole, take out the waste, go just over the depth of the screw like that so we're just at right at the depth that's plenty I've got some furniture polish here any wax polish will work St set that in the screw into the hole with the wax on it and this is just paste wax and that will help seat the screw all the way down 
and even slot head screws will go in drive a lot more easily when you've waxed the screw and that's it so we're going to put the hinge against the hinge we want to deduct the space after this hinge is inside here so if I take my tape but it's up against here I've got 23 and 1 8 so half of that will be 11 and 9 16 so I now measure 9, 11 and 9 16 from the underside of this hinge 11 and 9 16 and then I come from this butt hinge here and come 11 and 9 16 and this is purely a cross reference so that's that distance and sh they should in the theory of things so it does it goes slap bang in between those two pencil lines so that's the position for this hinge so I do exactly as the same as I did for those come across here with a light pass just to get the hinge distance exactly so these hinge recesses become dedicated by the actual hinge so even if there is a variance as I showed you before that variance isn't going to affect what we're doing so I'm going down here and then I go in with my knife again on either side and I'm going to recess this one exactly the same as I did the top hinge that you saw me do this time I'm going to mark this side so I know where to stop and start my gauge line there's my gauge and now I'm ready to chop my recess and I'll show when I've finished we'll get back together and we'll hang this in the cabinet